Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's focus on linear regression. Linear regression is one of the top topics appearing in data science interviews, especially statistics interviews. And in this video, we are going to focus on one fundamental question. What are the assumptions of linear regression? We will talk about not only the assumptions of linear regression, but also how to diagnose violations of those assumptions. As you will see, violations of linear regression assumptions range in importance from critical to less than ideal but non-critical. On top of that, I will also give you a tip to remember the assumptions easily. All right, let's dig in. The assumptions are as follows. The true underlying relationship between x and y, the independent and the dependent variables, is linear. The residuals are independent. The residuals are normally distributed, and they have constant variance, i.e. homeostasticity. So the first assumption of linear regression is about the relationship between x and y, and the remaining three assumptions are about the residuals or errors. You can easily remember this with the acronym LINE. L stands for linear relationship. I means the residuals are independent. N means the residuals are normally distributed, and E means equivalence of residuals. It's important to check these assumptions when performing linear regression, as violations of these assumptions can have a substantial impact on the parameter estimates, including the confidence intervals and the levels of statistical significance. Note that linear regression does not assume anything about the distributions of x and y. Also, you will sometimes see additional assumptions listed, such as the sample is representative of the population, or the variables are measured accurately, etc. Although these are important considerations for statistical modeling, they are not necessary assumptions of linear regression. Now, let's look at each assumption in more detail. The first assumption of linear relationship is that there is a linear relationship between x and y, the independent and the dependent variables. This is a critical assumption, as we are estimating the linear parameters of the independent variable. If the underlying relationship between x and y is not linear, the model won't be a good fit for the data, and the parameter estimates will be meaningless. In reality, it is rare for x and y to have a perfect linear relationship. In other words, our data to fall perfectly on a straight line. Instead, it's more common for data to appear as a cloud of points. As you can see on the slide, in each scenario, the data fall around a straight line, but none of them fall exactly on the line. One common way to spot nonlinearity between x and y and verify if this assumption has been met is to use residual plots. A residual plot is a plot of the residuals on the y-axis versus the predicted values of the dependent variable on the x-axis. The points should be symmetrically distributed around the horizontal line with roughly constant variance. Let's look at some sample plots. The plot on the left does not show any obvious signs that the relationship between x and y is nonlinear. The residuals appear to be randomly dispersed, and the variance of the residuals is the same all along the x-axis. But the plot on the right shows potential issues. In particular, there appears to be a curved linear trend in the residuals, suggesting that the relationship between x and y is nonlinear. We should not use a straight line to model this data. Instead, a more advanced technique should be used. The second assumption of linear regression is that the residuals are independent. This assumption is also critical, but often violated when the data are collected over time, such as time series data, as successive residuals tend to be positively correlated. For example, if we collect successive data on the temperature in a city, the temperatures are likely to be correlated within seasons and unlikely to be random. Now let's see how to diagnose if the data meet this assumption. To check independence, we can check if the observations are collected in a sequence and if there's any connection between cases that are close to one another. A pattern that is not random suggests lack of independence. On the slide, the left plot shows the sample data with their best fitting lines and the right plot shows their corresponding residuals. It's clear that in this case, successive observations are highly correlated, so the independence assumption does not hold. Moving on to the third regression assumption, which is that the residuals should follow a normal distribution. This is a nice-to-have condition. 
However, it is not required. Here, we benefit from the central limit theorem, which holds that if the sample size is large and the data do not have lots of outliers, then the parameter estimates and the predicted values of the dependent variable are approximately normally distributed, even when the residuals are not. However, violation of normality for the residuals create a couple problems. They make it difficult to both determine if model coefficients are significantly different from zero and calculate confidence intervals for predictions. Sometimes the residuals are non-normal because they are skewed by the presence of a few large outliers. Since the parameter estimation is based on the minimization of squared error, a few extreme observations can have a disproportionate influence on parameter estimates. Therefore, it is essential to check your residuals to see how they are distributed. There are different ways to check the normality of the residuals. A common method is to use a quantile quantile or QQ plot of the residuals. QQ plots show the quantile of the residual distribution versus the quantile of a normal distribution having the same mean and variance. If the distribution of residuals is normal, the points on such a plot should fall close to the diagonal line as shown in the graph. In this plot, the residuals have a bowl-shaped pattern. The deviations from the diagonal line indicate that the residuals have excessive skewness, meaning that they are not symmetrically distributed and have too many large errors in the positive direction, making for a long tail. In this plot, there's excessive skewness or a long tail in the negative direction, and the bow is turned in the other direction. Here's another example. This is an example of an S-shaped distribution. This plot shows a distribution that is under-dispersed relative to a normal distribution. It's more like a uniform distribution. As shown in the histogram on the left, the tails in such a distribution are virtually non-existent, and there appear to be no outliers in the data. In summary, the bow-shaped and the S-shaped distributions of the QQ plot indicate that the regression residuals are not normally distributed, which is a violation of the normality assumption of residuals. Moving on to the last assumption of linear regression, and that is sometimes referred to as homostaticity of residuals. Homostaticity means equivariance. The residuals should have approximately equivariance. If not, the regression model might not be a good fit for certain data points, i.e. those with large residuals. In practice, this assumption is often violated. It is a less important consideration for inferences based on parameter estimates. In terms of verifying this assumption, we can also look at the residual plot. The residual plot is useful for checking the homostaticity of residuals. And in the case of time series data, you may want to look at a plot of residuals versus time to ensure that residuals have equivariance. Let's look at some examples. Here are three plots that suggests that the variance of the residuals is not constant for the predicted values. In the first case, the variance is small to the left of the plot and large to the right. The residuals become much larger as the fitted values increase. In the second plot in the middle, the variance of the residual is linear instead of constant. In the last plot on the right, the pattern is quadratic, meaning that the residuals do not have equal variance. For all these three plots, the residuals lack homostaticity and violate the last assumption of linear regression. All right, guys, let's summarize what we have learned in this lesson. We reviewed the four major assumptions of linear regression. They can be easily remembered using the acronym LINE. The first two assumptions are critical and the last two are less important. We also discovered how to diagnose each assumption. It's important to check these assumptions when performing linear regression. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Feel free to rewatch this lesson to review the assumptions of linear regression. I will see you in the next lesson.